Here's a parent. I don't know if we'll play this, the whole thing here, but he's, he's speaking out against CRT. This is a, a black parent, we'll mention, and uh, at his school board. And here's what he has to say about critical race theory. Let's, let's play it. The non-discrimination resolution, the CRT deal, because it's, it's happening. And as a parent, I speak to other parents. There's a few things that we don't want. I'm biracial. I'm bilingual. I'm multicultural. The fact is, in America, in North Carolina, I can do anything I want. And I teach that to my children. And the person who tells my little pecan color kids that they're somehow oppressed based on the color of their skin would be absolutely wrong and absolutely at war with me. And I think that's the same for every parent. What the mask showed us is that the parents, the most powerful group of people in our country, that they're taking back the wheel. Now, obviously, we had to take the wheel back for the mask, but we're taking the wheel back from Washington all the way to Raleigh and into our local school board because CRT, all of that, the parents don't want it. It's a big fat lie. There's not one belief. If, if you believe in CRT, I want to tell you you're a liar because that means you look at your black neighbor and say that they're oppressed and you look at your white neighbor and say that they're evil regardless of the experience that you've had with them. And we're not going to do that. The parents in the United States of America right here in North Carolina and Cabarrus County, we know that's not true because we believe the lives we live. The fact is, I've been a business owner right here in North Carolina, and I deal with white people, black people, Hispanic people. My children deal with everybody. And the racism is only happening at the government level and on the media. The fact is, you have racists, and there's like, you can't even find them hardly. You just hear the stories about them. But this is, this is what we're dealing with. The parents are taking the wheel. I have an eight-year-old daughter who okay. is absolutely so have, uh, dynamic. Who can this is an important perspective too, because we talk about critical race theory, and uh, you know, I've pointed out that it's anti-white racism, which it is, and we have to call it that, and we have to condemn anti-white racism because it's a, it's it's the only acceptable form of racism left in America, which means that it's it deserves most of our attention. Um, the, the types of racism that almost everyone agrees are bad. Well, we don't have to talk about it much because everyone agrees that it's bad. But his perspective is also important too, because because you know, it's, it's quite demoralizing, to say the least, when you tell someone, tell a kid from a very young age that he's oppressed and he's a victim, and you're, and you're driving that into his head. Now, it's also bad when you tell a kid that because of his skin color, he's a villain and he has something to apologize for and should feel guilty. But honestly, if I, had, if, if I could choose... You know, if, if, we were, if we were actually able to identify as whatever race and uh, decide which benefits we want to enjoy, I, I think I would, I would still prefer to be shouted out, shouted down as the villain and be blamed for all of the world's atrocities and every bad thing that's ever happened in history. I think I would prefer that over constantly being told that I'm a victim and I'm oppressed and there's nothing I can do about it. I prefer neither of those options, but if I had to choose one, I think I'd rather be called the villain than be called the helpless victim. Because when you're the helpless victim, you have your free will is being taken away. You're immediately being assigned this position. And um, so it's quite degrading and dehumanizing. So we appreciate that from that parent. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.